O oh God, who nourishes our bodies and souls, feed us with your word that we may see others in a new light and serve those in our midst as we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be pleasing and acceptable to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now here in our gospel lesson we see or we hear that Jesus has been invited to the Pharisee's house for a meal. And we don't know if he is in fact the guest of honor or if he's just one of several rabbis who've been invited. But he tells two parables as he notices where everyone begins to sit down. One is about where to sit, and the other is about who to invite. And the interesting part of this is that normally Jesus is pretty abrupt about how he tells stories. But in this particular one, he tells a story purposely, and it goes purposely goes out of his way not to insult the other guests. He sets the guests at ease by using a wedding banquet as the backdrop to his story, rather than a meal at a Pharisee's home. It would have been interesting, though, to see where exactly Jesus sat down when he sat to eat his meal. Did he take the lowest seat? And the host asked to move him up as an honored guest? Or was he just one of the many rabbis at this meal and his seat was among the others? We don't know, do we? But his story, his point, we do. But regardless, it takes, he takes this opportunity to teach. To teach about inclusiveness and humility. Jesus is performing his own open and affirming education right here, 2,000 years ago. Jesus' first story warns about exalting oneself because those who exalt themselves will, in fact, be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Again, we see that God's ways are not our ways. They're not the world's ways. Because those who brag and puff themselves up will eventually have a big, big fall. You see, this scripture is the only thing giving me hope regarding our political climate and society today. I mean, look at the parents who try to buy their kids into elite colleges. They were humbled in a big way, weren't they? Faces plastered all over the news. And now they're possibly facing jail time. But isn't that the way of this world that we live in today? We use our privilege over others to get what we want, whether it's money, race, status, or popularity. And Jesus is warning us that when we try to exalt ourselves, we put ourselves over others. And ultimately, we face being humbled in a rather dramatic way. And to drive the point home, Jesus reminded us that we should not step all, uh, those that we should not step all over. In fact, Jesus tells us that they are the ones that we should be the honored guests. We should invite the poor, the disabled, the outcast, the prisoner, the hungry, the homeless, anyone who cannot repay us. Because if you only invite people who can do the same for you, well, your, your reward will be repaid when they invite you to their party. But when you invite those who cannot repay you, then your reward is definitely in heaven, as promised by Christ. Now, here in Bloomsburg, we have several opportunities to serve those who cannot serve us, don't we? We have a food pantry on Center Street. We support that here. We have food back there. We, we need to get some more back there. A little hint, hint. So we need to get some more back there for the food bank. We have panther packs. Same thing for the summer, for the summer meal programs, which have now come to an end. But remember, panther packs are for the weekends. Kids get to eat during the week, but there are some kids out there who don't, can't have nothing to eat on the weekends. So the panther packs provide them food to take home that they can actually have something to eat and fill their bellies over the weekend. And there's multiple organizations and churches that are helping with Meals on Wheels for our elderly. And we have meals provided by civic, civic associations and, 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 and religious organizations, like at, over at Wesley, Wesley United Methodist Church. Well, we used to support that. We used to actually host a few meals a year. We don't do that anymore. You see, Jesus gives us clear instructions to do just that. 
Is it because we don't have enough people? Or that we just don't want to give up a Saturday? See, these are the hard questions of being a Christian, of being a disciple of Christ. Are there other ways that we could humble ourselves in unselfish service to God? Absolutely. Certainly there are. And one of those ways is through teaching. We use the old Chinese proverb here that says if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And that's exactly what we do here at Trinity with a crock pot ministry. We provide, we provide low income people with crock pots and food that they would actually get <coughs> the, at the uh, food pantry. And we show them how to make meals. So a single mother or a single father can fix up a meal in the morning, get the kids off to school, and then come home and have a hot meal waiting for them. And then they can take the leftovers and they can portion them up and maybe even take them to lunch with them in the morning, or maybe even a snack for the kids later on. What a wonderful opportunity we have to be able to share this ministry with our community and those in our, in our community who truly need this. And it wasn't just low-income people who were coming either. There's regular people coming to learn how do they portion and how do they make these meals and crock pots. And some of these meals are just not phenomenal. And there's a whole bunch of them. We have a commercial kitchen. We have have you, have, have most of the, I don't know if all of you have ever gone in that kitchen, but if you, got, if you go in that kitchen, that's a commercial kitchen in there. And it has, it can provide food to feed hundreds, hundreds, easily. And we can use that commercial kitchen. But should we duplicate our efforts and do the same thing Wesley's doing? Or the same thing the First Presbyterian Church is doing and keep doing meals here, doing meals there, so people are going all over town getting meals? Or could we teach people, use our kitchen to teach people how to do canning? Yeah, canning. Because you know something? Down here at Agape on Thursdays, they use our parking lot for their fresh produce, their fresh produce distribution, so that so the lower income can get fresh produce. And if we can show them how to can and how to be able to learn how to can those, and maybe provide them with some canning, canning materials, they can have food when things aren't quite meeting the budget, when things don't quite meet in the middle, to, to fill that gap. What about baking? Instead of going out and buying a birthday cake for their child, they can actually learn how to make one with the stuff that is at the food pantry. Learn how to do baking. Learn how to do. We bake right in the crock pots. In fact, there are some wonderful ways. We actually had our. <clears throat> most of you know our sexton, Gene Gray. Gene taught a class down to one of my to my church down in Allen or down in Copley, of how to start little small apartment gardens. We can have to do the same thing here for people who live in apartments and be able to have herbs and even some vegetables for themselves to help cut the cost. Because obviously seeds don't cost near what the actual herbs and such cost in the uh, grocery store. So there's so much we can do as a church and not just duplicate our efforts as other churches do, but we can find new ways using our, the assets that we have right here. A fantastic commercial kitchen that we can use for our community, not just ourselves. What a wonderful opportunity we have. And when we teach, it's like the old proverb goes, you can give the, give the food away, feed them for a day. But if you teach them how to cook, you teach them how to use the, the resources they have, you feed them for a lifetime. And hopefully that's something we can do right here. We could also work with a table and do admission projects. We could work with Wesley and First Prez. But the question is, there's, been, there's a lot we can do, but the question is, will we do it? Will we do it? Because that's the question that Jesus asks us today. Will we humble ourselves for others? And will we invite others in to our community here? And this story kind of brings it home. Once again, the author is unknown. 
It goes this way. It goes, I was walking home from work on a busy city street with lots of people. I wasn't looking forward to going home because my friends weren't able to hang out with me that night. That's when I walked past a homeless person that I hadn't seen before. He was moving back and forth to stay warm, and he was gently asking for change. He spoke so quietly, you could barely hear him. But something made me stop, turn around, and walk up to him. All the while, anxious thoughts whirled around in my head. What, what do you think you're doing? You're alone. It's dark out, and you're a woman. Before I knew it, I was saying, <clears throat> before I knew what I was saying, I asked him if he had had dinner yet. Then would he like to join me in a nearby restaurant? He said he hadn't eaten and he would like to. So he walked with me to a few yards, for a few yards, to the restaurant and held the door open for me as we entered. He asked, <clears throat> he asked for the smallest thing on the menu. But I ordered a much larger meal for him and explained the price difference wasn't worth worrying about. We had a good dinner and pleasurable conversation about everyday stuff like where we grew up and what kind of music we liked. The whole time I was just praying to say the right thing and give him the respect and dignity everyone deserves. I didn't want to come across like I was better than anybody or out to fix someone. I was so grateful for this experience. I may not, I may not have met my friends that evening, but I met an unexpected friend and the experience changed my life. I will, <clears throat> it'll make me think twice in the future before I complain about something I think I lack. May we here at Trinity never exalt ourselves, but rather humble ourselves in the service to our God and to those that God calls us to serve.